Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. My name is Ramandeep Singh and today we are going to do an important topic. So that is the IBC. Very important topic students from past few years I have noticed that one question sometimes three or four questions are asked from this particular topic. Very important topic that we are going to do today. So first of all what is uh, IBC and why let me just hide myself. The IBC is India's bankruptcy laws. So before IBC, there were multi, it is not an act, it is a code. So what is a code? So it unifies the existing frameworks, right? So there are multiple before the IBC, there were multiple processes, multiple laws, which were governing the bankruptcy process, right? Insolvency and bankruptcy process. So IBC streamlined that, right? So it unifies the existing framework for uh, bankruptcy laws, right? So what is insolvency? It is a condition in which a debtor is unable to pay off his or her debts. That is an that is a condition and bankruptcy is a legal process uh, that involves an insolvent person or company that is unable to pay off its debt to you know, solve the matter. If uh, the bankrupt person if the insolvent person is unable to pay off its debts so uh, the lenders are going to sell off the assets and recover their dues right so there is a proper process right to make the process faster for both lenders and borrowers so IBC is there right so the code repealed all the previous legislations there were multiple laws multiple you know, acts were there, which were dealing with the bankruptcy procedures. But now IBC is there, which has a standardized framework. We are going to discuss this standardized framework in the next slides, right? So it enables uh, creditors, lenders to analyze the debtors, debtors viability to conduct the business to continue the business. So creditors uh, checks whether the debtor uh, can actually continue his business profitably, whether that person can pay off his debts or not, whether to continue, uh, give him the more funds, or just liquidate or sell off the assets. So the lenders, they, they do the analysis, right? So we are going to do the proper, uh, we are going to read the proper procedures. So certain terms that you should be aware of the first one, the insolvency professionals, so insolvency professionals to become an insolvency professional. So you need to appear for the exam by IBBI, which is a regulatory body. So they'll be in charge of the resolution procedures. So the insolvency professionals will be in charge. They'll become the manager, right? They'll handle the debtors assets and provide information to the creditors to help them make the decisions, right? So insolvency professionals, they are going to handle the assets of the Data. Otherwise, the debtor is going to take away all the assets. Okay. Insolvency professional agencies. So insolvency practitioners, they will be registered with professional agency for insolvency, the exams are conducted, right? So yeah, that's how they register themselves, they need to register with the agencies, right? What are the IBBI is one of those agencies, right? So insolvency board is also conduct, uh, uh, you know, in India, I, the insolvency and bankruptcy board ov oversees the insolvency experts, professional agencies, and information utilities under the code. So it's a monitoring authority. Information utilities, they will maintain the track of debts owned to creditors. So information ut utilities, ye abna, uh, you know, information track record, rakhte hai, records, rakhte hai, okay? they maintain the records adjudicating authorities nclt is there and uh, debt recovery tribunal is there for individual and partnership firms debt recovery tribunal is there for uh, companies nclt is there national company law tribunal is there okay i hope that is clear i explained everything in, in very easy language uh, let's move forward if that is clear the minimum default amount under CIRP. So what is CIRP students see corporate insolvency resolution process if the amount of default. So minimum amount of default abhi update ho chuka hai 2020 mein. if it is more than one crore if amount uh, of default is more than rupees one CR, then CIRP proceedings would be implemented corporate 
uh, insolvency resolution process if it is less than uh, if it is less than 1 crore but more than one uh, uh, more than 10 lakhs then pre-packaged insolvency uh, resolution would be implemented so please uh, note that if the default amount is more than 1 crore CARB is implemented if it is less than 1 crore but more than 10 lakhs then uh, the PPIR uh, you know uh, proceedings will be implemented we are going to do, uh, do the differences as well next slide mem difference bhi karenge so uh, we I have already done all that in my course uh, in the Bank of Maharashtra journalist officer course please check uh, links are available in the description anyway students so procedure for corporate insolvency resolution process so there is a proper process students. so once a default is done so the debtor has done the default okay once a default is there appointment of IP uh, appointment of insolvency professional and a moratorium period of 180 days would be given which can be extended to 270 days for you know uh, which can be extended on request for 270 days okay so uh, once a moratorium period is over credit committee would be formed a credit committee of the you know lenders they would form credit committees okay and uh, if 66.66 or two third of the creditors if they have approved a plan a turnaround plan okay that would be implemented otherwise all the assets of that uh, company would be liquidated okay so that is a simple procedure moratorium period and extension you need to remember that okay and then two-third of the you know creditors voting is required even that is important okay so please remember that okay and in insolvency and bankruptcy code bill 2021 that is an amendment happened last year pre-packaged insolvency resolution uh, was uh, you know introduced for uh, default amount of more than 10 lakhs but less than one crore okay so uh, there are certain difference between uh, the pre-packaged and the CIRP what is the difference we are going to understand in the next slides so PPIRP is type of restructuring in which creditor and debtor they collaborate a lot of homework is done before going to for uh, you know the proper uh, you know the decision making before the decision making a lot of homework is done financial creditor will consent to the terms of a possible investor under this method if uh, if it is possible for an external investor to you know come into the picture and invest money I mean that even that would be possible they will also see clearance for NCLT for settlement plan so approval of financial creditor, the resolution plan, however, cannot be submitted directly to NCLT before submitting. It must be approved by minimum 66% of financial creditors who are unrelated to corporate debtors. Okay, so it is different. The CIRP, no homework has to be done. Once the default is done, appoint your insolvency resolution uh, professional. Moratorium period is there. Once the moratorium period is gone, credit committee is formed, then decision is taken. Simple. But here, I'll, in the, you know, for the MSMEs, for the smaller defaults, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, homework has to be done. A lot of homework has to be done. A minimum default amount is 10 lakh. Very important. Maximum 1 crore. Okay. Uh, the moratorium is less the moratorium period allowed here is 120 days 120 days of moratorium period is given so uh, the nclt the preference is given to pre-package insolvency uh, resolution processes before the cirp okay priority is given they are ahead of the line okay the major difference between cirp and ppirp the CIRP is applicable to any corporate debtors uh, because the default amount minimum default amount is one crore while the PPIRP pre-package insolvency resolution process it is applicable to MSME where minimum default is 10 lakhs and maximum is one crore okay priority uh, the priority to PPIRP is uh, you know it gets a priority in that in the, in the resolution if application is filed before CIRP okay so no preliminary work has to be done in case of uh, CIRP. Koi preliminary work is directly appoint your insolvency resolution uh, 
you know a professional but in case of PPIRP you need to pass a special resolution approval of 66.66 or two third of creditors is required name of resolution process whichever you are going to hire base resolution plan by the corporate debtor other information a proper report this homework has to be done even before appearing uh, even uh, you know uh, uh, appearing before uh, the nclt you have to do all that homework to make the process simple and smooth while this is not required in case of cirp that is very important following persons can initiate a cirp the financial uh, creditors or operational creditors or corporate debtor itself or the promoters while in case of ppirp only the debt uh, only corporate applicant can initiate the ppirp okay so or its promoters or directors right the operational creditors cannot just come and file that you know uh, the ppirp okay so the time limit is different 180 days which can be a maximum of 330 days in case of cirp but in case of uh, ppirp it is 120 days it takes lot less time okay constitution of credit uh, committee of creditors in pp in cirp it takes 30 days maximum uh, is 30 days while for uh, ppirp seven days within seven days you need to you know constitute the committee of creditors so this is the subtle difference between ppirp and cirp so which of the following is not an objective of uh, the ibc promoting availability of credit uh, promoting entrepreneurship recovery uh, of uh, loans by creditors insolvency resolution of corporate persons so that's a little subjective question you're not going to find such questions in the exam so ibc 2016 has adopted dash model for cirp it's creditor in control in the cirp as you might have seen uh, it's creditor in control in the beginning the insolvency professionals are hired okay uh, they are appointed after moratorium period the creditors uh, the committee of creditor is going to take the action they are going to take the decision so creditors are in the control if you book a flat with a real estate company the company enters a corporate insolvency resolution process you would be considered as uh, as a financial creditor you will you are going to be a financial creditor okay a creditor can initiate pre-package insolvency resolution process when the debtor company has defaulted at least 10 lakhs at least 10 lakhs so minimum 10 lakhs maximum 1 cr okay who regulates the insolvency professionals in india so it's insolvency and bankruptcy board in india they regulate the insolvency professionals in india they are the regulatory body the powers of uh, the board of directors of a company undergoing corporate insolvency resolution process is exercised by whom so the powers of board of directors it is exercised by the resolution professional so he uh, he he becomes uh, you know the the main uh, he replaces the board of directors okay he takes all the decisions who among the following has the highest priority in distribution of sale proceeds of liquidation uh, is, uh, state in a liquidation process? The workmen and the employees, workmen, they get the highest priority, okay? Which of the following financial service providers have not undergone corporate insolvency resolution process under the IBC? Yes, bank ka nahi hua hai, okay? Baki ka ho gaya. A committee of creditor is comprised of all financial creditors like the banks right no individual shall be enrolled as a professional member if he is not eligible to be registered as insolvency professional with the board okay with the board he has to be you know to be registered with the board he needs to clear the exam uh, within how many days a liquidator shall distribute the proceeds from the realization from the receipt of amount of the stakeholder within 90 days he needs to distribute okay so students bank of maharashtra journalist officer 2022-2023 course for the scale 2 and scale 3 exam it's available on bank .com where we are providing video classes the complete uh, coverage of the syllabus video uh, notes test series proper quizzes are there live sessions are there so everything is available on bank the links are available in the description 
in case of any doubt this is our whatsapp number 9067201000 this is my personal whatsapp number here you can ask your questions and i'm going to answer your doubts right uh list of our successful students in 2022 we did bank of maharashtra journalist officer course and we got eight final selections i'm really really happy for them and then in 2020 all these students who took our courses in the previous exams and they cracked their uh, you know uh, particular exams specific exams for the specialist officer for scale 2 scale 3 for bank of india vijaya bank all these students that took our courses in the past and they cracked their respective exams i am really really happy for them if there is any doubt in your mind always ask your doubts and i'm here to answer all your doubts and that's all for today students i hope you like the today's session if there is any other doubt in your mind please ask your doubts okay so thank you and have a very nice day bye bye